we will talk about some of the advanced materials. Okay. So, we have seen the basic materials and the in the advanced category we keep those materials which are just coming up their use. So, mostly from the laboratory they are just getting rolled out and they are used in certain very very high performance applications. Now, one of them is the smart materials as you can see here that uh, there are various groups of smart materials. I will talk about them later on like piezoelectric, magnetostrictive, phase transition dependent or electromagnetorheological materials. Now, in all these materials the reason why they are called smart materials is that they do something more than a simple you know coupling with the stress and the strain in the sense that every material if you apply force it deforms, but not many materials will actually deform with the application of let us say electric field or say magnetic field or say electric you know light itself or uh, you know temperature or say uh, you know not many materials will change their viscosity with respect to the change of electric field or magnetic field. These are the group of materials which have a very good use in terms of uh, making sensors, in terms of making artificial muscles etcetera and they are covered as smart materials. So, that is one group of materials uh, that has just you know that are just coming up. The other group of materials which are becoming very popular are actually biomaterials. Now, they are the materials which are actually uh, getting linked or coupled with the living system itself. Okay. For example, you think of the artificial joints, you think of the bone uh, you know replacement, you think of artificial tendons, you think of dental implants or something which changes the blood vessels, heart valve, skin repairing, cochlear implant, contact lens, what not our entire human body. In fact, if you go through some of the science fictions you know you would see that uh, a person you know is depicted with of 300 years of age and the person is telling you know there is hardly anything now in my body which is having a kind of a genetic origin which is something which I got from my biological parents. Everything got gradually replaced by actually engineering materials. Now, that is the day towards which we are advancing. You would see that all the joints today are getting replaced by uh, engineering materials. Our eyes are getting replaced uh, by these uh, you know uh, the synthetic eyes like the specs and uh, similarly uh, the various parts of the body. So, that is what is the biomaterials and that are actually becoming very very important in today's context. Now, biomaterials could be metals, could be non metals that means ceramics and other things or polymers. So, for metals you have you know this uh, chromium alloys or stainless steel. The essentially important thing here is that the material should not react with the living tissues. Okay. So, some of the very important applications are for example, the stent which saves you know lot of life today right. So, what is the stent technology? Here we are talking about a material which at a particular temperature you know blood is warmer. So, at a particular temperature it actually expands and then through that expansion it actually if there is some place where there is constriction in the blood vessel it tries to actually clear up that constriction. So, that is one type of a you know also smart material, but it is a biological material. Then of course, there is these uh, you know uh, implants uh, in terms of the dental implants. You have the prosthesis uh, you know in terms of uh, fracture of bones where it is used or the hip implants. So, metals are used very much some of the metals are very well accepted inside the body and they are used uh, in, in terms of prosthetic systems that is one of the important biological materials. The other group are the polymers which are also used in orthopedic applications, but more, more in terms of say artificial tendons or say you know artificial skins 
tendons or grafts, facial and soft tissue reconstruction. Uh, there are these uh, like methacrylates for example, which are coming up in a big way. Then scaffolds for building the tissues or wound dressing for example, okay, or retinal implant or contact lens. This is where the polymers are mostly used. Then there comes the ceramics. So, ceramics you would see again in prosthetics in terms of mostly as the joints because I told you that one of the most important property of the ceramics is that it is this coefficient of friction is quite low it is almost like it can work like a frictionless material almost and that is very good in the joints. So, they are used in joints uh, you know various types of joints in knee joints in uh, shoulders etcetera. So, that is one of the good thing and also where you need a high compressive strength for example, for dental uh, you know uh, the prosthesis ceramics are used in a in a very large manner. Then there comes a very <laughs> interesting type of a material. So, that is so far I talked about the biomaterials and the smart materials. This one that I am talking about is called aero gel. Aero gel is a material which is like 90 to 98 percent porous. It is very very highly porous and they are produced by extracting the liquid component of a gel through a supercritical drying process which extracts all the moisture out. And once you do that, then the air molecules that get trapped in the gel would act as insulators and its heat conductivity will be almost close to 0. They are nowadays getting used in terms of thermal barrier, thermal insulators and acoustic insulations etcetera. So, that is about the aerogels. I told you that aerogels are highly porous, it is so porous and lightweight that you see for example, this salt like material that you can see here which is a aerogel, you just disturb it a little bit and you will see that almost it looks like a liquid, okay. but it is basically it is highly highly porous, you have to give it some time so that it will actually settle down. So, that is the level of porosity in the system. Now, this uh, porosity has a very wonderful application because of this high porosity they can actually entrap air inside them and hence they become an excellent thermal insulator. For example, you know this is uh, like the same material we have developed a heat foam okay, out of it and you see there is a heater here and it is very hot that you will not be able to keep your hand it is full fledged condition. But if you keep this material the area where you will keep this material you can actually very easily keep your hand there. Okay. So, it can work very well in terms of a uh, you know a, a heat insulation. So, that is the beauty of one of this advanced material which is the aerosol. Then there is another group of materials which are known as superconductors. These are much much better than the metals why because they conduct electricity without any resistance and if there is no resistance means there is hardly any loss of electricity, but they are costly because of the cryogenic requirements. So, they have you know two very important effects one is the Meissner effect which can be used in terms of magnetic levitation and another is the Josephson effect which can be used in terms of uh, for example, uh, fuel cells etcetera where you can have without any uh, you know voltage uh, uh, generation in any voltage uh, you know EMF you can actually pass electricity. If you keep two superconducting elements uh, in between if you keep an insulating layer that is the Josephson effect. So, superconductors are the dream for tomorrow's technology and uh, then one of the most fascinating things is the carbon nanotubes. It is developed in 91, but in various forms in fact, as CNT uh, first maybe in terms of fullerene structure there is a Nobel prize, then there is the graphene uh, you know people got Nobel prize. So, this is something that is actually that is a promise to revolutionize everything 
I will talk about the power of the carbon nanotube also at a later stage when we will talk about a very specific development in terms of a space structure. Now, this carbon nanotubes are actually they are essentially carbon atoms which are linked in hexagonal shapes and as you know the carbon bond the covalent bond is one of the most strong bond is the strongest bond in available in nature and this strongest bond is actually used completely by the carbon nanotube and hence it is the strongest and the stiffest material available in nature something like which is 100 times stronger than steel. It also has very high degree of thermal conductivity and electrical conductivity. So, together with all the very you know good properties CNTs are going to be one of the most important materials for building tomorrow's technology. Now, this is where you know I am bringing the whole discussion to an end. In the next lecture, we will talk about the basic concept of stress and strain and the group of mechanical properties like the tensile strength, ductility, brittleness, resilience, toughness, impact strength, your basic understanding of it. So, this is where we will bring an end. Thank you.